anything that was going to happen with the commercials had to be very specific to the world of the Matrix. Trinity's car coming along. Twins behind. No gunfire. Again. Larry and Andy we didn't want it to be like a Bond film or one of the other kind of like Action. big franchise films where they really didn't have much to do with the world of the films or the mentality of the Matrix films. So as a first assistant director in both two and three, Larry and Andy said, hey, would you be interested in doing some commercials? We're in post-production and there's no way that we can possibly do them, but we think you'd be a good person to do them. From watching those films and being around those films, as an assistant director, you get an idea of how things are lit, how things are costumed, how the choreography of the movements work. It's impossible to spend five years with people every day and seeing how they make films and not to rub off on you. But they're clever guys. They've got them, me probably to do them because they knew that I probably more than anyone know how to imitate you know, what they've done. Greetings, theater attendees. Right now, as you sit in your comfortable seats, viewing your filmed entertainment, perhaps enjoying something from the concession stand, consider this. The active human body can generate up to 12,000 BTUs of body heat. Pure, precious, life-giving energy. It is unfortunate your collective puny little minds couldn't figure out a way to harness this energy, put it to good use somehow. But that's beside the point. The point is to keep generating all that energy. Your body needs to be replenished. So, drink your Powerade. We have quotas to meet. And the Powerade script's great. You know, they were like simple, very much within the Matrix world. You know, really great writing. So they got presented to Larry and Andy. And they were really happy with them. You're a battery. And batteries need to recharge. It was set like in the interrogation room from the first film. Sort of a take on that. And it was basically one of the agents sitting there as if he was talking directly to the audience, telling them in a very subversive way that they should drink more Powerade. Drink more. Drink more. Drink more. The ads were good because they tied into the Matrix world and they were a bit dark and they were a bit sarcastic and, you know, but they were also funny, you know. You never usually get that many commercials which treat the audience with a bit of disdain. Drink more. I'm in. In the Matrix, Neo and, and, and Morpheus, they, they, they talk on a phone that, that, that is essentially a phone that exists in the Matrix that was designed by uh, the brothers and by Owen Patterson. Operator, get us out of here, Lee. We set about in 2000 to design a telephone that would fit in with Reloaded and Revolution. I did a couple of sketches and then Simon Merton turned those into a beautiful drawing, which was a telephone that the top would flick out. And the sense of the phone was like a gun, like the handle of a gun, and the mechanism was almost like a flick knife or something like you're cocking a gun. So you click the button and the piece shot out. And then we added the fact that you could pull the battery compartment out and it looked almost like a cartridge. So you could load the telephone with a new battery and it was almost like loading a magazine. After Matrix, a lot of people expressed um, interest in getting hold of that telephone that we had in the first film. And they, they didn't exist. So we thought this time, you know, a lot of people would be interested in having this telephone, particularly if it felt like it was something from the Matrix. And so we were really keen to, uh, you know, get a manufacturer to create our telephone so we could see this prop turn into a real practical object. We should make it feel sturdy. It feels powerful. We approached various companies to see who might be interested in manufacturing, but 
Everyone said it was technically just too difficult to make a telephone like this. Eventually Samsung came around to thinking that this is a telephone that they could make, they could manufacture. The drawings and the, and the construction drawings were sent to Samsung along with the kind of images of what we thought it would look like. So they took those and uh, used those to make a prototype of their phone. It's quite an interesting piece of design. I need to download the Hotwire motorcycle. So you'll be able to connect to the net. You'll be able to have a very high sound quality. The colour screen's fantastic, it's really high quality screen. You'll be able to download images or the phone would come with images from the matrix. Essentially it's the same phone, they've done a great job. A new reality has been revealed. The Samsung Matrix phone. Answer the call. Samsung, given that it has a significant role within the film, this Matrix phone would be an ideal opportunity to tie various products to that, are, that they made or that you see within the film. There were two spots. One was a, a phone, and then there was a, another commercial uh, for their televisions. You cannot escape the Samsung 40-inch LCD flat panel TV with revolutionary DNIE picture enhancement. Welcome to the new dimension. We took Daniel Bernhard, who played Aiden Johnson, and put them in a chase scenario through like a cityscape somewhere. There was a lot of running in it. There was a lot of harness work and wire work. When you're doing something like that, it's good to have someone who's done it before. And the great thing about Daniel was he was really amped about that character that he plays in the films. And again, anything to reinforce that character was he was happy to do. A new reality awaits you. The Samsung rotating camera phone. Answer the call. For the, the phone one, they said, you know, there's all these digital backgrounds that exist for the park fight for the Burley Brawl, which appear in the film. Wouldn't it be great if we could get the phone, we could put it in the park environment, and because all those digital backgrounds exist, there's a, like a bunch of really cool camera maneuvers that are impossible to do, except for like in a digital world. The phone could do these sweeping moves down to the ground, or it could spin around at superhuman speed, like in the Burley Brawl. With the Heineken commercial, it came to be that Larry and Andy wrote a commercial, and we decided to get Danielle Bergio back, who was Carrie Ann, or the Trinity stunt double in the film. There is some wire choreography in it as well, so we also decided to get Dion Lamb, who was like one of the great wire choreographers from the film, and get him to work with Danielle like you would normally would on a Matrix film. Larry and Andy have their hand in everything. Not much, it sort of gets past them. They, you know, looked at storyboards. I would tell them who I was going to cast. And they essentially approved everything. If you're going to do a movie tie-in, you may as well get people involved in the project who know a bit about that world and are going to try and keep that Matrix world or that Matrix universe, like, intact. In essence, it's like you're all a bunch of walking, talking, living, breathing, stinking, disease-ridden batteries.